He just opens the door and jumps out. Here we go, without ever having done anything to try to save the aeroplane. <clears throat> yeah, today we've got the YouTuber Trevor Jacob, everybody. You might have heard of him over the past few days. Very controversial name in the aviation community very recently because of his most recent video that he uploaded on Christmas. I crashed my plane where the, you know, the title doesn't lie. He actually does crash his plane, which, uh... He made a video about here. Apparently what happens here in this video is that he flies this Taylor Craft 1940s vintage plane above the skies of California, but then suddenly he has an engine failure and he deals with this emergency situation by jumping out of the aeroplane instead of landing it in a safe spot. Mm, yeah, here we go. Here is the legendary shot of him jumping out with a parachute rig, which is a interesting way to deal with a emergency like this. <laughs> yeah, interesting one. Now, of course, him jumping out of the aeroplane results into the aeroplane crashing into those California mountains, which, I mean, we do have to say does make for some interesting GoPro shots. They apparently all survived quite well. Here we go. Here's another camera angle right here from the wing. Okay, that does look quite fascinating. We do have to say, we don't get this kind of camera angle often. Of course, Trevor Jacob here uh, safely somewhat landed here with his parachute. Uh, here we go, in some bushes. Actually, not, not even that well. But anyway, that's another story. But now, here is the catch. There are a lot of people claiming that um, Trevor Jacob right here deliberately let his plane engine fail to record this video. You know that this was all a planned stunt and all completely staged. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of people claiming that this was all just done for views, I guess, on YouTube, which, I mean, he kind of is getting right now. I mean, 200,000 is not that much for a, <laughs> crashing an entire plane, if I'm being honest, but that's another story. Yeah, but especially in the aviation community, this is going quite viral. There's like a ton of memes. Yeah, Trevor J. Cuff for basically no reason. <laughs> the, videos like this, this is, this is why I pay the internet bill every month. Hilarious. We've got some more memes right here. When ATC tells me to copy a number, just jump out right there. Absolutely beautiful. We've got this meme right here. What is the most important thing a pilot can possess? An airplane that I can purposely crash for a YouTube cloud. Great. That is just, that's just absolutely hilarious. But this meme stands out quite well here. I crashed my plane in FAA and NTSB. <laughs> Yeah, and actually this meme turned out to be true. The FAA is actually investigating this case as well. So everybody, in today's video, I thought we could also do some investigation, you know, and answer some questions. Is this really a staged stunt video? Should Trevor be punished with what he did? What are the consequences of having a plane deliberately crash into a mountain? Jail time? Question mark? Yes, everybody. Today it's time for some examination time. And before we dive into this uh, interesting video, I do would like to say that I'm no expert on anything at all, right? I'm just a stupid German teenager who flies Cirrus planes around, which, uh, which would actually make me an expert on using chutes to deal with an emergency. But that's another story, great. Anyway, so for those who don't really want to watch this 16 minute video, here's a quick summary of what actually happens here. So the video starts with him introducing to his flight that we're gonna do is a little bit awkward, but that's another story. It's gonna be a super good time. Yeah, he claims that he wants to fly up the Nevada mountains here from California to spread the ashes of his friend, um, John, which he, uh, he put in an old sandwich bag, which is like, that's interesting to transport your friend in a sandwich bag. But another story. And you know, he's all like, oh, you guys, so this will be a great flight. And this is... Thank you to the Ridge Wallet. Yeah, the Ridge Wallet. And this is where he goes into the sponsor of the video. Uh, this video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet thing. Uh, interesting uh, video to put a sponsor in, right? <laughs> this is something I just generally found a little bit funny when watching the video. Like, he talks about his dead friend in, in the general video, how he almost died flying a plane, crashing into the mountains. And then he's all like, oh, by the way, Rich Wallet. <laughs> Great. Yeah, 10 out of 10 advertisement here. Good. Anyway, he continues then to take off, I guess, again, from this California airport. Yeah, apparently it's this Lompoc City Airport here in California. Here we go. And everything is looking fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here we've got another shot of the friend. A little bit straight. Oh, no, no, that's, that's, that's not what we're here for. All right. As you can see, everything here is fine. Yeah. 
Good times. But then, suddenly above the mountains, I guess pretty much in this moment right here, <gasps> the engine cuts off. Here we go. Engine is dead. And then around 16 seconds after the engine drops out, he uh, continues to open the door. And well, as we already know, he shortly after jumps out right here with this legendary meme template. I mean, we do have to say that. I want to see this again. Here we go. Super crazy. All right. And then we already know what happens after that. You know, the plane just crashes. One of those videos that I just want to watch again right here. Oh, man. What an impact, dude. So sad for the aircraft. Generally. Uh, sad. All right. As we already know, he ends up landing in this tree and then hiking up to his aeroplane. Here we go. He ends up finding the wreckage and it does look very wrecked indeed i guess here he retrieves all the gopros it doesn't really matter he's then later on picked up by a farmer and uh, i guess brought home eventually yeah that's what kind of happens in the remaining 10 minutes of this video let's now focus on uh, the controversial bit especially let's talk a little bit about why people think this could be staged a stunt first of all something that people find a little bit weird is like this general backstory that trevor here is trying to sell to us because i mean just the fact that he does this quite normal and quite uninteresting flight here in this plane with 10 GoPros attached to the plane, like for pretty much no reason at all. Seems a little bit suspicious. People also find weird is the fact that he has a selfie stick ready here to film his wrist cam, right? You know, people just find a little bit suspicious that he has a perfect camera set up. I don't know. Anyway, something that can also be pointed out here is the fact that he's wearing a full-on jumping rig instead of like a normal emergency um, parachute, right? Like, look at this. Look at this huge thing. Why would you fly this 1940 Taylor craft with a full-on jumping rig? You know, this is like the equivalent to wearing a full-on racing suit to drive your Range Rover to the grocery store. Yeah. I don't know. Now, something else that people find a little bit weird is this intro here in general. Like, some people pointed out that it does kind of feel like bad acting. As in, he knows that this flight isn't gonna go as well as he's saying it is. Oh, I'm. this is gonna be so fun. Like, I don't know. Some people say that they can tell in his eyes that he has got something planned. That he's not planning on ever bringing this Taylor craft back to the ground safely. Snowboarding. Right, you know what I mean? It's gonna be a super good time. I don't know. There's like no reason to properly record this video in such a fashion. And this Ridgewall thing just keeps killing me. <laughs> yeah, this is such a weird placement. Great one. Oh, it seems that's a random video to put like 10,000 GoPros in. But anyway, now it's time to go a little bit more scientific. Let's actually go to this actual jumping scene. All right, here we go. This is where this happens above, again, those, you know, California mountains. What's interesting to point out here is the extremely high altitude Trevor Jacob is flying this uh, Taylor craft at. This is not a very high power plane. You normally don't fly it at such an altitude. This literally looks like, I mean, maybe it could be distortion from the GoPros, but this looks like 10,000 feet. Like, this is very far above those mountains. Very, hmm, power jump uh, friendly, to put it that way. But now it's time to take a bit of a closer look at this engine failure that's happening right here now. Here we go. You can see that loss of power right here. Now, this is something we cannot really draw any conclusions off, like how the engine exactly failed. There's people saying that he deliberately let the plane run out of fuel, but uh, the easier theory is that he just, you know, turned the engine off. <laughs> Again, we cannot really draw any conclusions from that because in the video, he's not including any of the in-flight GoPros that are filming here. No footage from any of those inside cameras can be seen after the engine apparently goes out, which is interesting. Now, what is really suspicious is how Trevor here reacts to the engine actually failing. You know, as a pilot, you learn this in your training. There's always a, a pretty same procedure in most, in mostly any plane. Like, for example, you first of all established your best gliding speed, which, for example, in my series would be like 100 knots. You know, every plane has this individual speed um, assigned, and this is where you would either, you know, pull up or push down to establish that speed to get a nice stable glide already, okay? Yeah, this would be the first thing that you would do with a yoke, but he doesn't do anything of that. He does something very weird here. Well, as you can maybe see, he pulls and pushes the yoke back and forth, which would be a very unnecessary thing to do, a very stupid thing to do. And the theory behind that is that he's trying to slow the plane down in order to make that propeller stop, which in a real emergency situation like this would be a very, again, unwise thing to do. Why would you want to make the propellers 
that, that makes no sense at all. Other than that, in an emergency situation like this, he would, you know, do things like looking out for landing spot and especially restarting your engine, trying to make it work again. Also, something he would do is communicate, make a distress call, a mayday call, right? But what he does here is none of that at all. He doesn't even try to save the aeroplane, which just seems very suspicious. All he does is 16 seconds after the engine apparently dies is jump out. He just opens the door and jumps out. Here we go, without ever having done anything to try to save the aeroplane. Like, okay, I'm totally in a position to only make assumptions here about this flight, of course. This guy, as every criminal, is um, innocent unless proven otherwise. But uh, I'm quite theorizing that, uh, I mean, this is quite obvious, seriously. I mean, he didn't even try. Like, this is so badly staged as well. Like, he doesn't even, like, he doesn't even make it convincible, which is so weird. Great, yeah, this is just so against anything that you would learn as a pilot. Like, for example, the plane that I fly also has a chute, the Cirrus. And when you learn to fly a Cirrus, you learn that you don't just pull it right away when you're at high altitudes, when you have problems, you troubleshoot first. Again, you try this whole restarting engine thing, mayday, distress call, everything. You might just, I mean, look at how high you are. You are literally in a tailor craft plane. You can literally land this plane in a parking lot. It's a tail dryer. You can land this everywhere. Yeah, you're already 10,000 feet above ground, right? Right here, you could seriously just fly back to civilization, right? Yeah, none of this was done here. This thing has a stall speed of like 40 knots, doesn't it? You could have landed it here down in this dried river, couldn't you? Look at that. This would have been a perfect bush strip. My god. So yeah, I have two theories about this interesting flight. Either he staged this indeed, or he's just the worst pilot ever, which honestly, I don't think. He's got a lot of flight hours, I think. Um, I think it's literally staged for views. So yeah, everybody, let's just assume that this actually turns out to have been a stunt instead of like a heroic emergency situation, right? What would be the problem of that? First of all, well, of course, it's just absolutely irresponsible to crash this plane in a mountain of the southwest turned wilderness. Like just from an environmental standpoint, I mean, look at this. This could have easily caught fire. I'm glad it didn't. I guess something that, you know, Trevor did right here was uh, take not much fuel on board the plane when he <clears throat> was planning on crashing it, apparently. Again, I can I can only assume things. Don't want to be sued as well. That would be good. Yeah, I mean, think about the wildfires this could have started. <sighs> think about the human lives that could have been endangered. I mean, again, look at how high the plane was. This could have literally glided to, again, to civilization and crashed into a house. What about all the people hiking? What about all the... What about all the animals? This is just absolutely stupid. I mean, think about all the oils probably leaking now in this California mountains. It's just, this is just bad. Like this is just, even if this was not staged, this is a very selfish way to get out of your emergency as a pilot, honestly. Another thing that people are pointing out all the time is uh, the case of an insurance fraud, which would be the case here in indeed, like staging an emergency when it's actually, well, intentional. That would be insurance fraud, of course. So that's, that's, a lot of trouble. So yeah, this is why people want to see Trevor Jacob in jail. I'm, I have no idea about the US justice system, uh, but I would say this is a little bit of a harsh punishment. I would just suggest that this guy should just never touch an aeroplane again ever that I think could be a good solution. Now, something I am worrying a little bit about is the FAA and while well, it being able to find evidence that this was actually a stunt. I mean, how would they know? I mean, the only way I would think now they could uh, actually prove whether this was a stunt or not is if they actually forced uh, Trevor here to release the unedited footage here of the inside cameras. This would give us some answers to what actually happened in the cockpit. But uh, honestly, I think that footage is already deleted anyway. If this guy is smart in any way. So yes, everybody, what have we learned from today's video? If you wanna mm, stage a plane crash for YouTube views, at least do it properly. At least try to make it convincing that you tried to save the aeroplane and don't, don't just jump out. And uh, yeah, just kidding. No, this is just absolutely stupid, irresponsible. Don't ever do this. Please don't be ever that desperate for views. I mean, I've done some things, but uh, you know, this, this is just, bad. Seriously. So yes, Trevor J. Copy got the attention he wanted. I will watch this case as it goes on in high interest. I really want to find out what happens to Jacob now. We'll just have to wait for some news from the FAA. So yeah, guys, that is Trevor Jacob. Thank you guys for watching today's video, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, I'm out. Oh my god.
Now, thank you to all my members here on YouTube, like Spice, Robbie, Middle Aged, Levi, Junk in the Trunk, Mubarak, Darren K, Oh Man, Moritz, John, Kelly Chaos, Death Rider, uh, Ragings, Noah, Yes Aviation, British Series One, Saturn Cat, Sunno, Shadow, New, New York, and Jackie Boy.